For this video, we are going to be graphing base 2 logarithmic graphs without a calculator. In order to do this, we're going to have to start with a graph that we know. The first thing we're asked to do is graph 2 to the x. 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8. As I go to the left, 2 to the negative 1 is a half, and these little points down here get closer and closer to the x-axis so I'm not going to worry about plotting them too precisely. So that's y equals 2 to the x. This graph also has an asymptote right here on the x-axis, which is at y equals 0. Next, I'm asked to graph the line y equals x. The line y equals x is the diagonal line through the origin with a slope of 1. And I'll continue it down. On the bottom as well. Next I'm supposed to graph the inverse of y equals 2 to the x. The way I graph an inverse function, remember, is by reflecting the graph over the line y equals x. So each of my points, the x and y values, will switch coordinates and my function will now have its asymptote going vertically at x equals 0 instead of y equals 0 it will now level out close to the y-axis and it will go forever to the right over there. This is my inverse. So what I just graphed is y equals the log base 2 of x. That's how we say that. The little number that's down low is the base of the logarithm. So it's the inverse of 2 to the x, which is y equals the log base 2 of x. Next, we're asked to complete the table of values and the information. For y equals 2 to the x, the points I'll start at the way I plug them in. 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8. With the negatives, they were just the reciprocals of all of the positives. For my 2 to the x function, my x-intercept there wasn't one because that was an asymptote. My y-intercept was the point 0, 1, and my asymptote was y equals 0, the horizontal line of the x-axis. The domain of my original function, my 2 to the x, was x could be anything because it went forever to the left and right, and I can take 2 to any power. The range for my original function was y such that y is greater than 0, because I was always above the x-axis and I didn't actually land on it and equal it. To figure the table for y equals log base 2 of x, remember what you're dealing with is an inverse. When we find an inverse, we switch x and y. If you notice, the x values from my table of my logarithm are the y values from the original table. So when I fill in my y values, they'll be the x values from the original table. My x and y just traded places. On this one, my x-intercept is where I touch the x-axis, which is now at 1, 0. My y-intercept, I don't have one because that's an asymptote, and my asymptote is x equals 0. That's now a vertical line. The domain of my logarithmic function. As I want to find a domain, I'm going to look from left to right. If I start out at my anchor point right through the origin and I look at my red inverse graph, my graph appears only on the right side. So, so I have a restriction. I write x such that x is greater than 0. You notice in my original function, the range was y is greater than 0 since x and y traded places. In my inverse, x is greater than 0. Likewise, in my original function, my domain was x is an element of the reals. It should make sense that in my inverse, y will be an element of all real numbers. And if I'm trying to see that graphically, I want to take and I want to look up and down. In my graph, if I look at my anchor point right here at the origin, my inverse appears both above and below, so I have no restriction for my range. 
We now have a new inverse function. It's y equals the log base 2 of x. What does this mean? This means 2 to what power gives me x? We'll work more with evaluating logarithms later. For right now, to get our parent function points for the logarithm, we're just going to think of the original table for 2 to the x, and we're going to switch our input and output, our x's and y's, and that's how we're going to get the points for our 2 to the x. Now we're going to move to number 2, and we're going to try to walk ourselves through this one using transformations. In number 2, we're going to graph y equals 2 to the x with a plus 1 on the outside, and we're going to graph the log base 2 of x minus 1 with the minus 1 on the inside. Let's start with the 2 to the x plus 1. This is going to be our exponential function. It's been moved up one unit because the plus 1 is on the outside. So we move our asymptote up 1. Our points were 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8, which just doesn't quite fit on there. And that's how we make our exponential function. To graph our logarithmic function, we're going to, in this function, move our log one unit to the right. So in our original logarithm, our anchor point was at the origin. Now our anchor point is being moved over one unit to the right. The asymptote vertical goes through that anchor point. So x equals positive 1 is our asymptote. From here, we think of the points backwards that we did for our 2 to the x function. So instead of going over 0 up 1, we go over 1 up 0. Instead of going over 1 up 2, we go over one, up 1 over 2. Then instead of going the coordinates 2, 4, I go 4, 2. Likewise, I now go 8, 3 and my function now has this vertical asymptote that it gets closer to. To answer the information about the log graph, the x-intercept is now the point 2, 0, since we moved it over. There's still no y-intercept. For the domain of this function, we want to start out, and we're going to look at our anchor point. Our anchor point right here, the domain, I only go to the right of this, so my domain for this function is going to be x such that x is greater than 1. The range is going to be y is all real numbers because I go up and down forever. The asymptote was x equals positive 1. The entire time when I look at my function from left to right, I'm increasing. So since my graph started at 1, and went up to infinity, I'm increasing from 1 to infinity. I'm never decreasing. My end behavior, as x approaches infinity, that's the right side of my graph. On the right side of my graph, my function is going up, which is positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity would be the left side of the graph. So I don't really have that. I'm going to put an NA in there. What I could have is as x approaches 1, y approaches negative infinity. Because this arrow here that's going down, my x values are getting closer and closer to 1, and my y's are heading towards negative infinity. So you might be wondering why we had to graph both of these graphs at the same time. Well, the reason is, if you look at these two functions, they're a reflection in the line y equals x, and y equals 2 to the x plus 1 is the inverse of y equals log base 2 of x minus 1. Pause the video while you do number 3 by transformations. In this problem, the plus 1 is on the outside of our logarithm, so it's going to move our whole graph up 1, making our anchor point right here. So the asymptote for the logarithm graph moved up 1. 
and each of the points moved up one, but they still follow the same pattern. Then I was to graph y equals 2 to the x with the minus 1 on the inside. That takes my whole graph and moves my anchor point 1 to the left. So my asymptote is still on the x-axis and my graph goes up from there, following the same points as regular to the x function would. So for my log base 2 of x with a plus 1 on the outside, my x-intercept was right here. The coordinates of that point were 1 half 0. The y-intercept is none. The domain is all reals, but x has to be greater than 0. The range is y is an element of the reals. The asymptote was still x equals 0, because when we move that up, it doesn't change. It's still increasing from 0 to infinity. It's never decreasing. For the end behavior, as x approaches infinity, the graph approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, this graph does not exist, so we didn't have an na down there. And then also with my arrow over here on the left side of the graph, that would be as x approaches 0, the graph or y approaches negative infinity because that part is down. Pause the video while you do the back of this paper and then check it. For number 4, we had an x plus 4 on the inside, so that moved our graph 4 to the left, making this our anchor point. We counted our regular shape base 2 function from there. We now had an x-intercept at negative 3, 0. We also have a y-intercept because our function now crosses the y-axis. The y-intercept is the coordinate 0, 2. For the domain, we're starting from our anchor point and looking from left to right. Since my log graph only appears on the right side of this, I have a domain where x is greater than negative 4 because that was the x value of the asymptote. To find the range, I look up and down from my anchor point. My function goes both directions, so my range is y is an element of the reals. My asymptote was x equals negative 4. I was increasing the entire time since my x started at negative 4. I went from negative 4 to infinity. I was never decreasing. As x approaches infinity was the right side of my graph, my y was going up, so it approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity would be over here on the left side of the graph where I don't exist, so I put an na. And as x approaches negative 4, the graph was going down, so y was approaching negative infinity. On number 6, we had the negative inside the parentheses, so that's going to flip us left and right. Our anchor point is still going to be the origin, but instead of our log going to the right like it normally does, it went to the left. Because of this, our x-intercept was now at negative 1, 0. We still have no y-intercept. For the domain, now from our anchor point, we only go left, so I am less than 0. For the range, I still went up and down, so I'm all reals. My asymptote didn't change when I flipped it left and right. What did change is that now when I go from left to right, my function is decreasing. Again, if I look at the coordinates of the arrows on this function like I used to, I'm at negative infinity for x because I'm on the left, positive infinity for y because I'm up. For this arrow, my x value is getting closer to 0, and my y value is down, so it's going to negative infinity. So when I'm going to write when this function is decreasing, I want to say I'm decreasing from negative infinity, which was the x value on the left side, until 0, which was the x value on the right side. Also, when I go to do my end behavior for this one, I have, as x approaches infinity, that'd be over here on the right where my graph doesn't exist, so I'm an a. 
as x approaches negative infinity, that's over here on the left, my y value right there was positive infinity. And as x approaches 0, that's this arrow, my y was going to negative infinity. On number 5, the negative was on the outside, which flipped me up and down. So now my log graph comes down instead. My x-intercept is still 1, 0. I don't have a y-intercept. When I go to do my domain, I'm still to the right of 0, so I'm still greater than 0. When I go to do my range, I'm looking up and down, and my graph appears up and down, so I'm still all reals. My asymptote was still at x equals 0. And in this function, I'm decreasing as I go from left to right. So I'm never increasing. I'm only decreasing. If I wanted to write the coordinates of where these arrows are, this arrow would be when x is 0, and then it's going up, so y is infinity. This arrow is going to the right, so x is positive infinity, and it's going down, so y is negative infinity. So when I write where I'm decreasing, I use the x values from 0 to infinity, and that's what I write in my decreasing. For the end behavior, as x approaches infinity, that would be the right side of the graph. As x approaches infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity would be the left side of the graph, which I don't have a left side, so I have an Na over there. And as x approaches 0, that was my top up here arrow, and my y was approaching infinity there. On problem number 7, I had a plus 1 on the inside, which moves me 1 left, and I had a minus 2 on the outside, which moves me down 2. So my new anchor point is right here, 1 to the left and down 2. From there, I count my normal shape. So my graph now has both an x-intercept and a y-intercept. My domain is greater than negative 1 because I've moved 1 to the left. My range is still all reals. My asymptote is x equals negative 1. For my increasing and decreasing for this function, as I go from left to right, I'm increasing the entire time. So I was increasing there from negative 1 to infinity. My end behavior as x approaches infinity, which was over here on the right, the graph was going up towards infinity. I didn't have a left. As x approaches negative 1 was the other end of my graph. My y was going down, so it was approaching negative infinity.